Welcome to B603 Revision on Medical Ethics. The two topics that we're going to look at here is animal rights and fertility treatment. So, when it comes to animal rights, one of the key issues is around animal testing. Firstly, I think the big point when it comes to animals and human beings is the big question, are animals the same or should they be treated the same as human beings? So, when it comes to animal testing, as you can see from the pictures, a lot of people get very upset about animals being used for uh, different experiments. And animal testing, otherwise known as vivisection, is also uh, one very controversial area. So, animal testing is when animals are used in medical experiments. Uh, lots of different animals can be used, dogs, rats, even fish, and other animals, uh, monkeys as well, get used, but they aren't used very often. And most animal that's used are rodents, mice, and rats um, within the animal testing industry. Tests are carried out on these animals to find cures for diseases and also trial new drugs before they're used on human beings. However, lots of people think not only is it cruel to test on animals and uh, they protest about it and even some break in and even target people who work for these, but others think it's necessary if humans are going to find cures for diseases. Um, one of the issues here is that animals are, uh, the animal uh, rights people say is when it comes to animals, there is no equivalent when uh, of testing on an animal and a human being and there are other ways you can test on um, drugs or find uh, find cure, try and find cures for diseases other than using animals uh, as well so people get very passionate about this discussion debate so uh, we're going to have a look at what Christians believe about the use of animals in medical research. So firstly, some Christians would oppose animal testing, and they would oppose it because uh, they would believe that humans have been created stewards, and therefore it is the duty of humans as a steward, which basically means they're caring for the creation, that humans should care for the animals and not destroy them. Um, one pope that lived in the past, and it doesn't matter if you use just one pope that lived in the past, said that, Scientists should abandon their factories of death and laboratories. Um, and even Jesus in, in uh, one of his stories says that God sees even one sparrow that falls to the ground. So they would argue from this as well, um, it's wrong to use animals or kill animals. And obviously the, one of the Ten Commandments is thou shall not kill. And they would say that this applies to animals and God's creation as well. Now, some Christians even believe that you shouldn't use meat. Uh, eat meat um, and obviously these Christians would be vegetarians because they take the stewardship idea um, absolutely and believe that animals should not be killed and used at all and uh, should just be left to live freely and not eaten and they would be vegetarians. However, a lot of Christians do agree with animal testing. The reason they agree with it is because they believe that humans are superior to animals that when animal humans were created, God created humans and breathed life into them. And this is what some Christians believe is a living soul or the soul. Um, humans have the relationship with God in the Genesis story and throughout, if you like, the Bible, whereas uh, animals don't have that intimate relationship with God. And there seemed to be that humans were basically created to um, rule over the animals, which another word for that is have dominion over them. So God seems to give Adam and Eve, human beings, the power to uh, use animals or to rule over them. Um, so that's why animals, they would say, are used for me. However, some Christian leaders in the past, here's another pope, that said it's wrong to make fuss of animals, especially when there are millions of humans dying. A lot of money, billions of pounds, are spent on animals um, as pets. And um, However, there are millions of people dying, children each year, and could that money be spent saving lives rather than saving animals, they would argue. Um, however, even though they agree with animal testing, Christians, most Christians would believe that it's important to use and treat animals with respect because God created them. They're still part of God's creation. And obviously the research uh, will, uh, they believe, uh, help human lives. So they would not be in favour of testing uh, animals or using animals in testing on household products or makeup and things like that. 
although I don't think this is legal now in the UK anyway to test on animals for makeup. So there are the two ideas about Christians opposing and agreeing with animal testing and the reasons why. So we're going to look at fertility treatment now. And fertility treatment is uh, basically where science helps a couple to have a child. You will have, if you're infertile, that means you can't have children. So fertility treatment is to help you that. And you can see from the image here that eggs are collected. Uh, they are mixed again in the with the science laboratory with uh, the sperm, and they are um, helped using. Um, science equipment basically fertilized and then the embryos are transferred back into the uterus the womb and then they're implanted and basically hopefully grow into a human life from there so it's science if you like doing what nature can't um, in that way so there are very strong opinions about fertility treatment and what we're going to do is look at what uh, the Christian responses are to fertility treatment but also we're going to look further into what fertility treatment is so, obviously, fertility treatment is where science helps a couple have children. So the eggs are donated, the sperm's donated, they get put together in a science laboratory with, if you like, very specialist equipment, um, fertilised and then stored, and then the embryos can be used. So you can see here in the picture uh, on the left-hand side the needle going into the cells, and I'm sure the sperm will be injected into that very, very small egg there. And then it will hopefully grow and be implanted back and become a child. That is called an embryo, which is a human life in its very early stages. Even a, whether it can be called a human life is debatable. Um, so I've said what fertility treatment is. Helping couples have children who are infertile. One form of fertility treatment is called IVF. And this is where the egg is fertilised outside the womb used as science. Another form of IVF, or another form of, sorry, fertility treatment is called surrogacy. And this is where a woman who cannot have a child, sh another woman has the child for her and then gives the child over. It's called being a surrogate mother. So there are some key things we need to think about when we're thinking about uh, fertility treatment. Obviously, um, when science gets involved, uh, there are some questions that need to be asked. Because if you've got enough money, sometimes you can buy these things um, and get them done. So the question is, is should people over 50 have fertility treatment? What are the issues related to that? Is it right? Is it wrong? Why is it right and wrong? Should gay couples have fertility treatment? If they can't have a children naturally, should you be able to have children in this way? And is there a problem with that or is it okay? What are the reasons for that? Um, does fertility treatment allow you to choose eye colour, sex, hair, colour, um, and all the different attributes you want in a child in the same way that you choose a packet of biscuits, uh, your favourite ones? Is it going to become like that? Should single people have fertility treatment? You don't need to be married. You don't need to be a couple. You could just have one on your own if you've got enough money. You don't need anyone else. Is that right, wrong? Why is it? What about embryos that don't survive? Embryos are often defrosted uh, in nitrogen and then used. Um, however, some don't survive that process and die. Is that right and wrong? And the final one, is science playing God? Is science trying to do, in a sense, what nature should be able to do? And is it wrong to start playing God? Are we in danger of being a bit like Frankenstein and creating life and playing like the mad scientist with human life? However, what do Christians think? So for some Christians, it says a lot many Christians here, so from a Roman Catholic, they might be against it. And the reason is, is they believe that only God should decide when a human life begins and end. Doctors should not play God and interfere with nature. Children are a gift from God. They are a privilege and not a right. In the Bible, there's a story about a girl called Hannah who basically was kept by God from having a child. And this means that in this story, God prevented her from having a child. It was part of his plan. And therefore, her faith was grown and she develops as a human being, maybe by having to continue to have faith and her character develops. Um, and does fertility treatment stop those types of things from happening? Obviously, there is an issue of it using someone else's sperm or egg. Uh, in the Bible, and Christians believe that marriage is between two people. What about using someone else's sperm or someone else's egg? Is that introducing someone else into the marriage? And uh, technically, is that adultery? There is a phrase called mechanical adultery, which basically means that you are 
involving someone else in the relationship, a third party, and that might third party, and that might go against the commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. So there are some reasons why, but there are also a couple of re things you need to be aware of here. AIH stands for, it's a type of fertility treatment, artificial insemination by husband. That would be okay, and the reason is for that is because it's the husband, it's not, the, it's not another party. However, AID, artificial insemination by donor, may well be a problem because you're using someone else's sperm or egg. That wouldn't be okay because you'd be introducing someone else into the relationship. So, however, saying that, some Christians are in favour of fertility treatment. They believe that technology is a gift from God. Using technology would bring a child that would be loved into the world. And as Jesus taught that loving your neighbour is the best thing you could do, then uh, is, would that not be basically doing that very thing? So there would be nothing wrong with it. Jesus said, or the Bible says, sorry, in Genesis, be fruitful and multiply. Human beings' job is to have children. So surely fertility treatment is helping people just do what God's intended them to do, and that's perfectly fine. And also in the Bible, in the very early one story about Abraham and Sarah, which is a very early part of the Bible, and Abraham is considered the father of the Christian faith, uh, he had, if you like, a surrogate mother in Hagar because his wife couldn't have a child. Um, and that there you have an example of very early surrogacy. And uh, so therefore you could argue that the Bible uh, Bible uses it, he used it, therefore um, it's okay. So there are some responses to fertility treatment and some key ideas within it and some key questions. Make sure you look at both of the arguments and think about the questions uh, that are asked and why they could uh, be a problem and why what could be some answers to those problems potentially. The final area is cloning we're going to look at. Cloning means making an exact copy, and again, it's where science uh, basically gets involved, takes an embryo, creates a copy of that embryo. And the reason that this happens is basically because uh, there is something called a saviour sibling or therapeutic cloning, where a child might be born with a specific disease, and uh, an embryo uh, may be used to... Uh, hopefully uh, provide a cure for that disease by the other child. There are some issues with this um, in terms of cloning, and the issues might well be that an embryo is a life, therefore sacred. Um, should life be created to cure another human being? Surely it should be done out of love, some people say. If, embryos, if all the embryos don't make it and some are destroyed, are you destroying life? And the final one, are we in danger of trying to create life in a laboratory? Are we uh, touching upon things like Frankenstein did um, by creating a, uh, a human life um, which in natural world would not be created? So there are some key questions to do with cloning and the issues that it raises. And again, some people would be against it and for it um, for the similar reasons to fertility treatment.